The overall dimensions of our project base are 5 and 3 quarters by 14. And in the cutting guide, it says to cut two pieces of medium weight chipboard that are 5 and 3 quarters by 12 and two that are 5 and 3 quarters by 2. And so the way we're going to do this is we'll take one of the two inch pieces, put spread some glue on it, and then line it up even with the end of one of the 12 inch pieces. And then we'll put some glue down on the remaining part here. Once we get that spread out, we'll take our other 12 inch piece and put that, making a butt joint right there. Smooth that out. Then we'll flip this over and then we'll fill in this last section. with the other two inch piece. And then I'll just take this uh, piece that's been double thickness now and go put it under some uh, heavy weights and let it sit there for a little while and get nice and dry and flat. So my project base is thoroughly dry and I'm ready to cover the edges and so I've cut some strips of black cardstock one and one eighth inches wide and then I scored them at one half and five eighths and that creates a nice little eighth inch channel that will fit nicely around the edge of the base. Now because this is 14 inches long uh, I'm going to have to uh, make some joins here and that's why I've darkened with ink on my board so that if I don't get a perfect join I will you won't see anything through there. So I'm going to just uh, go around and probably miter my corners to put the center the front and back and then cut a strip that can probably go this whole distance like so if not um, meet here in the center. So I'll get that accomplished and then I'll be back. So I finished wrapping all of my edges here and then I like for the surfaces to be very flat and so I'm going to fill in with some black cardstock if uh, having a very flat surface isn't a concern to you then you don't need to do this. I, I think it um, I don't like to see that little ridge there. So um, I've cut some paper to fit and I'm going to do that on both sides. So for my base I wanted it to look kind of like a, a railway but when I tried various options um, with having ties and then the rails it looked like it was a little bit too busy underneath there for me. So what I'm going to do is just have uh, add some decorative uh, paper or I'm going to show you what I've got uh, as an alternative to paper and I'm going to put that down and then I'm going to add two um, things that look like the rails. So I'm going to use this thin adhesive backed cork. I just happened to have this and I thought it um, would look good. Now if you don't have that you can see that this paper is very similar looking to the cork and there is sufficiency, uh, sufficient paper here. If you cut one stripe here and one stripe here, you should have enough to go that uh, distance. Especially I'm going to hold it back just a little bit from the edge to have a little bit of that black reveal. I, I like the look of that. You can of course do it however you want. So I'm going to uh, use my cork and put that down and if you use the decorative paper you would just you know cut it and put some score tape on it 
make sure where you butt your joint um, that you co color the edges so that that white edge won't show. So I'll get my cork put down and then I'll be back. So I'm going to hold my rails back a quarter of an inch from the ends uh, of the uh, cork. And so I've cut two pieces at 12 inches and then from some scrap I just cut uh, two little pieces at one and one quarter. I did list three pieces of 3 8 by 12 in the cutting guide though. And so here I've just put a little piece of score tape on the back and these aren't going to take any stress of course but I'm just going to run a little bead of glue there and then use my cutting mat to make sure that I get this join straight and then I'm going to put a piece of 3 8 inch tape on the top as well because I can use that for my decorative paper and that will um, help to reinforce that join at this point. So I'll do that for the other one as well and then I'm also going to take my black marker and go around the edges of the chipboard. So I'm going to use this bird paper to cover my rails. I'm going to darken it with some ink. Um, I'm going to cut it off of this strip over here. Um, and it is about, oh, just shy of two inches wide. I'm just going to cut that two inch by that length and then I'll darken that and then I'll be back. So I finished darkening my paper just like I did for the windows and um, now I know I need to make a join here. I've measured in five and a half inches because I think that will end up being underneath one of the wheels and if it doesn't this paper is busy enough that I don't think it will show so I'm just kind of looking at where that is and I'm just going to remove my score tape backing up to that point and then I'm going to just line this up and trim that trim that off even with the edge of my chipboard and then I'll just keep doing the same thing I'll take a longer strip and finish this one and the same thing for the five and a half inch at the other end so I finished putting on my decorative paper and I inked the edges and now I've just decided to chamfer the corners a little bit so I've put the end on my 45 degree angle so then I'm going to cut off about oh an eighth of an inch and then I'm just going to chop down with my I have a good sharp blade in here and a good sharp blade will allow me to come from the, the wrong side as well as long as I Make sure I go all the way through. And then I'll just darken those edges. And I think that'll just give the ends uh, a little bit more of a, um, a finished look instead of just having the chopped off edges. But you can suit yourself, of course. So to attach our rails, we know that the width between the wheels on the locomotive, not between, from the outside edge to the outside edge is four and three quarters. And you can check that on the locomotive, but they should both be the same. And if that is our outside width, and then when we cut are either pattern paper, in my case cork, I cut that five and a half inches wide. So the difference there is three quarters of an inch. So if we bring in our strips three eighths of an inch from the edges, that should give us a four and three quarters across here. And I actually uh, increased uh, on the cutting guide had just went and made a change so that now we'll have cut four of these 3 8 inch strips so you can use this one as a as a guide, the leftover one as a guide. Now 
what I'm going to do is put some temporary adhesive just in a couple of spots and go ahead and stick that one down and then turn this one around and do the same thing and now I can double check to make sure I've got four and three quarters and I'll do that in a couple places that's looking good so then you can either um, so now we know that we can trust our little 3 8 inch strip or if you need to make an adjustment you'll make an adjustment but if you've cut the width of your paper or cork accurately and these strips accurately then it should um, come out but you know sometimes things things aren't exactly perfect uh, I certainly know that with how I work so don't be afraid to make some adjustments anyway um, we can either use uh, some uh, score tape or I think I'm going to use wet glue because I'm not quite sure how the score tape will hold up on this cork so either way um, and just watch your spacing end to end and go ahead and install those two uh, rails. Oh, and I should say that I have decided that this is my end that I'm coming in five and a half inch, so I've, I've got both of my strips so that they're doing that. But I can I can't tell where the join is on this, so I don't really think it's worth the trouble, but um, my eyes aren't always that great. So, anyway, back to gluing. Before we attach the bogey to the project, I want to add the cylinders. I'm going to hold off on the steam chest for now, but I do want to attach the cylinders. Now when you attach the cylinders, make sure that you have the dowels pointing towards the rear of the locomotive, the same direction that these pipes are going. And they will get centered underneath here. And these curves were sized so that the cylinders should fit just in, inside of them. So put some glue on this curved surface here and then put the cylinder in place and then hold it for a little while to make sure you're getting it good and, and attached and then allow that to set up. So now we're ready to glue everything to the base and then also glue the locomotive to the bogey. So the first thing I want to do is get the locomotive centered on the base. And I just have my little ruler here and I'm holding it straight up. And I would say that probably have about a quarter of an inch, now not counting this roof, to the main body here it's a quarter of an inch in from the base and on this side the same thing so I know that's where I want it so the first thing we're going to do is glue the bogey to the project base and I'm just going to take some post-its and put put them so that I know where on that rail track to put some glue. And I'll flip that around and do that on the other side as well. So I'm just, I'll probably have a, a good quarter inch or so openings here. I think you can see that. Let me get my little sign out of the way. So on the railing, these gaps are where I'm going to put glue for the uh, bogey and I'm going to do that on the same other side 
and I can get the main locomotive out of the way. I'm just picking it straight up. I'm just going to turn my whole mat around here, I think. Okay, so now I've marked where I'm going to put glue. I'm also, you might have seen my little sign here, before I glue everything up I want to remember to take the score tape backing off of these pipes. We're not going to attach them yet, but uh, you can see we won't be able to reach in there and get this backing off once the uh, main locomotive gets on there. So I've done that. And now I can pick up the bogey base and then put four spots of glue where I've marked with my post-its. Then I can, I'll check that on the other side. And that looks good, but before uh, that glue gets a chance to set up, I'm just going to set the locomotive down. And just check that everything is going to be in alignment. And that looks good, so I'm going to just take the locomotive out of the way for a second. These post-its out of my way. I'm just going to clean up any glue that's overrun um, on my places and just make sure everything looks the way I want it. And then I'll just keep a little pressure on it for a few minutes till that glue has a chance to kind of set up. And once that glue has set up some, I'll bring the locomotive back in, come straight down into the cradle there in the front. And now I can reuse my post-its to mark where the glue will go for the back wheels. Now I have all my posts in place. So I'll take the locomotive off. I'll put glue in the cradle. And then I'll put glue on the railings in the, these four spots, just similar to how we did for the bogey. I'm used to working on it with the front to my right. So I've turned my mat around and now I'm going to come straight down into that cradle and watching my wheels. Then I'll put some pressure on it I'll probably hold pressure for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to let this cure for a while. It's getting to be supper time so I'm thinking maybe I'll just let it go until uh, tomorrow morning. That way I'll know my glue is good and cured. And don't worry about the little um, pipes that have come off of the bogey. Uh, we plan to uh, put them uh, attach them once the glue is all set up. So the assembly is thoroughly dry now. You can see I can pick it up like this. I want to attach the pipes and I'm going to do that by putting it at eye level 
keeping it in its uh, standing position, keep putting it eye, at eye level, and then reaching in and, and attaching these pipes. And at eye level, I can make sure I keep them uh, parallel with everything.